Hello and welcome to yet another episode of The Novice Lumberjack, where I'm your host, Bodie. And today, we're going to be having trouble with the green screen because this is a green saw. <laughs> the other really cool thing about it is I have two. <laughs> so this one right here is clearly a different model year. You can probably tell right off the bat, or maybe maybe it's not so much that it's a different model year as it is that this one came from the factory um, ready to run a bow bar. Um, so I do have the bow set up for this. And whenever I get one of these running, whichever I choose to go with, whenever I get one of them running, I will definitely use that bow set up and um which is cool so enough of the jib jabber let's get to it first step you know how i do it first thing before i open these things up is um clean them up all right so they both cleaned up very nicely look at this i thought that, that was a different shade of green than it is <laughs> um really this one clearly uh, has more sun fade going on but uh, anyways boy that's coming out on camera it's coming out really green but um, in real life it's not quite that bright anyways uh, you this one right here look at the muffler I'll show you that oh, look at this this is the one that was set up for the bow, bow bar Oh my gosh, this is just terrible. The other one's just fine, you know? Looks good in there, but this one, that's a mess. It was awful, so finally got that off of there. I'll go ahead and get that cylinder off there. We'll see if it's salvageable. I don't know that it is or not. I got the clutch off and I've got it sitting there. It was really badly rusted. Hey, look, here's my gummy bears and stuff. Um, so I got it sitting in uh, the 116 octane race fuel because I can't think of a better use for race fuel than that. $16 a gallon, folks, and I'm using it as parts cleaner. Shit'll slow down your saws. Quit using it. Quit, quit using. I mean, not, not race gas, just simply high octane. You're wasting your money. Anyways. Just run 91, 87 if you can get it ethanol free. Unless you're building a race saw that has super high compression or advanced timing or something like that. Anyways, that's not about this. This is not about that. Here we go. So this is how I got that other clutch off. I'm fixing to show you. So I don't have a clutch puller for this. I'm not going to have a clutch puller for this. I just take a couple bolts that fit in there nicely. Boop, boop, like that. I get my piston stopper and I shove it in there. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. You know what always works is, uh, see that piston? Piston's in good shape on this. This is a really nice little saw, low use. There we go. Um, so that doesn't always work. You can't quite get it in there all the time. And uh, so, in those cases, what I do is string. String always works. But you can't get it, you gotta get that piston up above the exhaust before you start shoving that, uh, uh, before you start shoving that string in there. You'll bind it up, it'll get caught in the exhaust. So, here we go. <clears throat> Come on. I'm gonna hit it. I'm gonna do it like this. There we go. There we go. I think it's going. There. Ooh, there it is. This clutch was frozen as well, but not nearly as bad as the other one. But we're still gonna go ahead and let it soak and clean it up. We'll probably take it all apart and clean it up and all that jazz. But 
116 race fuel parts cleaner. Okay, so I've done check for spark. Oh, I want to throw in there what is really crazy. This right here, it has what seems to be an uh, aluminum muffler. Um, I guess it could be magnesium alloy or something like that, but but it seems totally to be an aluminum muffler. That's a first for me. I've never seen that. So, anyways, um, got a new fuel line in there. It all looks nice and clean inside that gas tank. Um, this right here is what happened to the fuel tank, why it was JB welded. So what we see is some, probably somebody tried to run a bow bar on this without a proper bow bar kit. But it uh, cut away right there at the uh, case there. But as you see, this ridge right here is in perfectly good shape, totally intact. And right here is the JV Weld Fix. It's uh, good, and I'm going to leave it at that. I don't think, yeah, I'm not going to rob this part off of that saw um, for this. I, I'm just not going to do it. So, uh, to explain what's going on here. So, what we have, I learned a while back on a McCullough that the seals for these gas tanks that are reproduced I think are crap. Uh, they, they, they just don't work right. And maybe they were like that all along from the factory way back in the day. I don't know. I don't know. Doesn't matter to me. All I know is they didn't work for crap, didn't like them, had a horrible time trying to get it to all fit in and lined up. They were warped and stupid. And so what I learned to do was just fill up that little channel with whatever RTV mix that you use that's uh, fuel and oil resistant. In this case, we have three bond, let's show you, three bond 1211. Uh, it is fuel and oil resistant, so it's going to be just fine, and it's not going to leak. And what we have in there is, my opinion, in here, the very best filter that you can get, and that's the old filters from back in the day. There's nothing wrong with that one. I'm going to keep running it. Just going to clean out all this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to carefully come in here and just put that in place. We're not going to do anything crazy right now at the moment. We're just going to go ahead, put this screw in, and let it sit. Once this gets firmed up but go ahead and get it just a little tight can't get it very tight using this you know we'll let it sit there it'll get firmed up and once it's firm we go back in with the big screwdriver and we tighten that down go ahead and get a new paper towel this stuff gets all over the place There we go. We have a perfectly good fix. No one will ever know that we didn't use a gasket because it's never going to leak. We got good fuel line on there and uh, a good fuel filter. And so it'll take decades before that stuff goes bad. As long as we use non-ethanol fuel. Anyways, so we got a good fix going on right there. And we'll come back and we'll tighten that up when it's all said and done. Now, we gotta remove that carburetor. I've already moved a couple pieces. What was really weird was this right here. I've never seen anything like this before either. So, right there houses your 
throttle, uh, your uh, idle pin. So this goes all the way in there. Let's see if you can see it. And up and through this little hole in the carburetor right here to touch your, your, your throttle linkage and, and hold your butterfly open. That's your actual idle rod. Never seen anything like that. that that's pretty nifty. Who knows how long it's been since this thing ran. I want to show you something. It definitely was ran before the ethanol. Because <laughs> look at this. That's not bad at all. Uh, now these flaps, they're, they're not, you know, see how, you can see how it's wanting to face in the wrong direction. Right. It's going like that. Dipping down in there. Um, but you know, we might be able to make this work without getting a carb kit. You know, just like all the rest of y'all. I get a new saw. I'm excited about it. I'm anxious. Wanting to make it run. Really wanting to make it run. So, we do that. Now those things will push down and they'll, they'll cover up their uh, holes that they're supposed to be covering up. It was a little bit of mess in here in that screen, not much, but um, we're going to go ahead and put this uh, back together on this end. But before we do that, let's take a look at the other end. Well, the other end is really surprising. That diaphragm is excellent. That's as good as new. Now I've heard, <clears throat> I've actually witnessed it myself that these things, once they get put back into use, they stiffen up again. But uh, that, that is a great diaphragm as of right now. So I am also going to put it back together and we're going to go with it. We're going to run this thing or see if it'll run. So in the process of putting it back together, oh, I have to clean up that clutch. I'll have to show you that before we put it up, put it together, I mean. The intake gasket got a little bit funky on this thing. See how a piece broke off there? So, I'm gonna make another one real quick. Okay, so now that we've got uh, the outside cut the way we need, we hold that in place. And see, there's a sharp edge right around there on the inside. Take a hammer, make sure you got a round, a round tip, and you lightly go through here, and you're hitting the inside of that lip. And hopefully, it'll be making a mark on your gasket. Now in certain situations, like automotive, where a lot of steel is used and not cast iron you can actually hit it so hard to where it's cutting cutting the gasket in this situation though yeah you don't want to do that because it's aluminum so all you're doing is hitting it hard enough to hopefully make a make an impression on that gasket can you see that now Take my trusty razor knife, and we carve it out. Oh, not too shabby, I would say, not too shabby. Go ahead and ream that out a little bit. Poke some holes in here for my, uh, in. Uh, what would you call that? Uh, your intake? Yeah, your intake bolts. I think we'll be good to go. 
Okay, so there we go. We got the gasket in place. And I want to show you this. The 306 is a reed saw. This, this is uh, your reed cage. And it goes in here. All right. So <clears throat> what happens is, is as your uh, piston goes up, it draws fuel through your carburetor, through this thing. And these reed pedals open up and it sucks in fuel, sucks it right in. And um, the reason these things are so unique, not, not really unique, that's not the right word, special, right, is what they are is they're a check valve. So it allows flow this direction, but it doesn't allow it to go back and blow out through the carburetor. See, that's a big problem whenever you're porting a saw and you change your intake timing. If there's too much of a fresh air charge underneath the piston, then whenever it starts to come back down, it'll want to push back through the carburetor, causing what's called blowback, right? Well, with a reed set up, you can suck in as much as you want, and then, bam, it can't blow back through the carburetor. So therefore, it kind of compresses a, to a point, a small amount, inside the bottom of the crankcase. Whenever the piston drops back down and then those transfers open, all of that now somewhat compressed charge of air and fuel mixture gets shot into the combustion chamber quickly. So anyways, these are one of the primary reasons why dirt bikes are so much faster and more powerful than uh, chainsaw two strokes because um, dirt bikes have really worked with this technology very well. Uh, there are a lot of other things too, but this is a big one. And what I've noticed on this one is one of these reeds. There we go. There it is. Do you see how it's a little bit open? See that? That's bad. That is bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this one and we're going to put just the slightest bend in that to get it to sit flat. <clears throat> Whenever you do this, make sure you do not bend in the middle of the reed. You want to bend right here on that line. And you don't even want to bend really. What you want to do more likely is coerce. Hey, right, you get what I'm saying? You, you, this right here, this stuff is kind of brittle. And if you do this too much, you'll crack it. And that is probably perfectly good right there. You can't, you don't want to do it too much. Be careful when you do it or you'll, you'll break this. All right, so there we go. This one right here is the one that I think this, honestly, I can't tell. They're all sitting nice and flat now. And that is exactly what you want. Okay, so I got the clutch cleaned up. This one right here was not the bad clutch, so it was quite easy to do. So what I try and do whenever I'm messing with something like this is I try not to take it apart unless I have to. Right, so all you really want to do is make sure that parts will move freely. So I literally got in there and I was digging out some gunk and I did this. Let's see, get that up a little bit, move it just a little bit where there's a crack there, right? And then put it back down. If these things are moving, that's all you want because. As soon as you go to take this stuff apart, it, it can become very difficult to get back together. One of the things I've always hated about old saws like this is how big the fuel line often is. Um, I mean, you don't need that big of a fuel line. It's crazy. But uh, lucky for me, I'm a dirt bike, four-wheeler kind of guy, and I've got stuff like this laying around. Because most people would go to, like, Advance Auto or whatever and get a small piece of, like, I don't know what that is, three-eighths line or something like that, um, and it would be black. Well, I hate that. 
I like to be able to see it because fuel flow, being able to see the fuel flow really helps for troubleshooting. Um, I have cleaned up the filters with uh, soapy water, warm soapy water, and they're sitting in the sun drying out. And uh, I'm going to put some fuel in this thing and see if it'll fire off. And you guys will see that. And But I'll have to wait for the filters to dry before I actually put it in the wood. And there you go. All right, let's see if she'll start and run. The filters are still a little bit wet, so we're just going to fire it up, and, or hopefully fire it up. Pulling fuel. Just ran great. Okay, so out there, whenever it wouldn't start for me, it's like, what the crap? Uh, I figured it was running too lean after I put no too rich once I put that filter back on. And so I was adjusting it and nothing was working. And uh, I probably got it all out of whack and everything. But I came in here and I pulled the spark plug to see if it um, was flooded out. And it wasn't, but what I did notice whenever I was pulling, checking for spark, was that right there, now I put the tape on it, but right there, it was sparking to the uh, uh, muffler. So, it was grounding out. I put some tape on there, which is already melted, and it fired right up. So, it was fairly weak cutting in the wood. I mean, it, it did all right, you know, but I imagine this thing's got a lot more torque than that. And so, what I figure has happened was as soon as I got it tuned decent, uh, we melted right through that electrical tape and started halfway grounding out again so um got to fix that but other than that you know hey it, it's running and i'm happy about it got this thing going and we'll see what i do with it uh, definitely 
am going to, I, I might pull the coil off of the other one. That's, you know, that's going to have to be a part saw. It's rough. Um, but I'll probably pull all of the bow saw stuff off of it. Do a video running it with the bow saw and then probably sell the whole bow saw as a kit. Then keep the saw itself as a part saw, maybe. I don't know. But, um, anyways, yeah. Got her going. Persistence. All right. See you guys.